It was guaranteed, if you come to Kashi, you will attain to Mukti. He established what is called today as Bhairavi Yatana. Last forty seconds, many lifetimes of accumulated karma will play out in fast forward. Karl Bhairav means uh, the dark one, as one aspect of him. It is uh, seen in many different ways. It is a deadly form of Shiva. When he went into a destructive mode, not of destroying this or that, of destroying time. See, all physical realities exist within the span of time, isn't it? If I destroy your time, everything is over. So, Karl Bhairav means just that. Because most people do not choose to live in a great manner, they have an aspiration, at least they want to die in a great way. That little aspiration brought millions of people to Kashi to die. So the last phase of their life people came because they did not live gloriously, they have a dream of dying gloriously at least. Hope. Dying gloriously means death leading not just to disposal of body, but death leading to an ultimate liberation. It was guaranteed, if you come to Kashi, you will attain to mukti. It doesn't matter what kind of a lousy creature you have been all your life. <coughs> so all the lousy creatures started coming because they lived badly <laughs> and they want to die gloriously. Only the… the population of the lousy multiplied. Then Shiva said the place is becoming lousy with so many lousy people. <laughs> the place itself will become lousy. So he said, there needs to be some check. So, he established what is called today as Bhairavi Yatana. You know what Yatana means? Hmm? Yatana means ultimate suffering, it's something that happens to you in hell. He will make it happen to you here. Last forty seconds of one's life, if one is either conscious or if he is in a consecrated space, this will distinctly happen to every human being. For whatever reason, one may be dying. Whether one is dying of old age or disease, the last forty seconds, many lifetimes of accumulated karma will play out in fast forward. At that moment, these forty seconds only, if you lived a life of ignorance, if you lived a life of unawareness, lifetimes of unawareness, these forty seconds, if you can maintain some sense of awareness, he said, all the many accumulated lifetimes of karma, you will drop it, you will go through an intense phase for forty seconds only and you will be clean and you dissolve. It's essentially spirituality means putting your life in fast forward. You may suffer much more because everything is happening at a fast pace. What you would have stretched for ten years is happening let's say in one month. So the amount of intensity of suffering that you go through is big. There may be moments of ecstasy and joy, but there is so much suffering because things are happening rapidly within you. So, at least towards the end of your life, you want to hasten the process. So, Bhairavi Yatana, all this is because of a powerful consecrated space. Consecrated space means one thing is just this, it's concentrated life. That means life becomes so concentrated that it burns karmic fuel at a tremendous pace. After some time, once you get used to it, there is no more yatana, it just burns. Simple. Essentially, you are at a higher level. So, that is the purpose of every consecrated space. 
Kashi is significant because of the enormity of the way they built it, the aesthetics, the beauty of it. In those times, they say there wasn't another city on the planet which was that beautiful. All these things put together, it became a big draw. I mean, they created the atmosphere to get the people's focus. So, Kashi is not all pleasure and beauty. It is a place where people go into most intense form of suffering because he puts life on such a super fast forward. Lifetimes of things burn in one moment. Dear seekers, in this exploration of liberation and spirituality, let us ponder upon three intriguing questions that guide us towards a deeper understanding. First, what does it truly mean to be free? Is liberation a physical state, or does it exist in the realms of our minds and spirits? Second, how does our connection with the inner self influence our perception of freedom? And third, in what ways can spirituality serve as a bridge to true liberation? Liberation is often thought of in terms of physical or political freedom, but in the context of spirituality, it takes on a deeper meaning. It becomes a state of being where the mind is free from the clutches of desires, fears, and social conditioning. This state of liberation is not something that can be granted by external entities, it is a journey inward, a discovery of the self that is unburdened by the ego and societal expectations. Consider the example of a person meditating in a serene environment. As they dive deeper into their meditation, they gradually shed layers of stress, worry, and societal pressures. In these moments, they are not bound by their job, social status, or even their personal history. They are experiencing a taste of true liberation, a state of being where they are in complete harmony with their inner self. Spirituality, in this context, is not just about religious practices or rituals. It's about connecting with something greater than ourselves, whether it's the universe, nature, or the divine essence within us. This connection brings a sense of peace and understanding that transcends worldly concerns. It's about realizing that our true nature is not defined by external circumstances, but by the eternal essence that resides within. For instance, when we witness the beauty of a sunset, there's a moment where we lose ourselves in the experience. Our thoughts, worries, and personal identities fade away, and we are left with a profound sense of connection with something larger than ourselves. This is a glimpse of spiritual liberation, a reminder that our essence is interconnected with the universe. The path to liberation is a journey of self-discovery, where we learn to let go of attachments and embrace our true nature. It requires patience, perseverance, and a willingness to look within. As we embark on this journey, we find that liberation is not a destination but a way of being where every moment is an opportunity to experience freedom and connection with the deeper aspects of life. Dear seekers, true liberation and spirituality are deeply intertwined. Liberation is found not in the external world, but within the depths of our being. It is a state of existence where we are in harmony with our true selves, unencumbered by the transient and superficial aspects of life. To embark on this journey of liberation is to embrace a path of self-discovery, where spirituality becomes the guiding light towards a state of profound freedom and inner peace. Continuing our deep dive into the nuances of liberation and spirituality, let's further explore how this journey of self-discovery and inner peace shapes our lives in profound ways. To understand liberation, we must first acknowledge the barriers that keep us from it. 
Often, these barriers are of our own making, our attachments, fears, and ingrained patterns of thinking. We cling to our identities, possessions, and beliefs, mistaking them for the essence of who we are. This clinging creates a state of bondage, where our happiness and peace are contingent on external factors. Imagine a bird in a cage, believing the cage to be the entire world. One day, the door opens, but the bird, accustomed to the confines, is hesitant to fly out. This is akin to our situation. The cage is our constructed self, built from our experiences, societal norms, and personal beliefs. Liberation happens when we step out of this cage, realizing that there is a vast sky beyond our self-imposed limits. To venture into this vastness, we must embrace the principles of spirituality. Spirituality, in its essence, is about connection to ourselves, to others, and to the universe at large. It's about recognizing the oneness in all things. When we meditate, pray, or engage in any spiritual practice, we are not just seeking solace, we are seeking a deeper understanding of this interconnectedness. Consider a tree, it stands alone, yet it is a part of a larger ecosystem. Its roots are connected to the earth, its leaves to the sky, and it supports life in numerous ways. Similarly, we are connected to the world around us in ways that are not always visible. Our actions, thoughts, and energies have ripples that affect the world. Understanding this interconnectedness is key to experiencing spiritual liberation. Furthermore, the journey to liberation is also about embracing the present moment. Often, our minds are caught in the past or anxious about the future. This constant time travel disconnects us from the here and now, where life actually happens. By being present, we open ourselves to the richness of life, experiencing it in its fullness. This presence is where spirituality and liberation intertwine, in the deep appreciation and experience of the current moment. Let's also consider the role of compassion and love on this journey. True spirituality fosters a deep sense of compassion for ourselves and for others. This compassion is not mere sympathy but an understanding that we are all navigating the complexities of life, each with our own struggles and joys. By cultivating compassion, we break down barriers of judgment and separation, moving closer to a state of unity and liberation. Finally, the pursuit of liberation is an ongoing process. It's not a single moment of enlightenment, but a continuous journey of growth and understanding. Each day presents new challenges and opportunities for learning and growth. The key is to remain open, curious, and committed to this path of self-discovery. Dear Seekers, always remember that liberation and spirituality are deeply interwoven, each enriching the other. The path to liberation is paved with self-awareness, compassion, presence, and a deep understanding of our interconnectedness with the universe. As we walk this path, we realize that liberation is not just a state to be achieved, but a way of living, a continuous journey towards a deeper understanding and connection with the essence of life.